MotherhoodSexMarijuana.com. Yes, indeed. Season four. We back in the dope. And you better let us in. Oh, oh, yes. Make sure you bookmark this site, MotherhoodSexMarijuana.com. And of course, when you want to get some cute cannabis gear, you turn to shop.spreadshirt.com slash MSM gear. Of course, we are having a sale at the moment, but you know, by the time season four kicks in, we might not be having a sale, but either way you should support, you should be checking out season four and you should be in the door with us because motherhood sex marijuana is back bitches ha <laughs> ha Oh, hey. All right. Well, hello. And thank you for being on Motherhood Sex Marijuana and, 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 and the podcast. <laughs> yeah. So are you Kai or are you Ruby? I'm oh, Kai. Must be Kai. Ruby is coming That's on Ruby. right now. <laughs> so let me ask, I guess, the most important question. Did you already smoke? Uh, yeah, because we actually did. We actually just shot a, 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 a previous episode, so of course, we already in the smoking clouds a, a, as we speak. <laughs> I support that, yeah. How many episodes do you guys do on a on a given day? I mean, right now, we're just, we're basically, okay, because now it's like you interviewing us, and we interview oh, shit. <laughs> y'all. Hold up now, wait a minute. But <laughs> let's kick this off right. Ruby, well, well, the six man one in the building with cannabis school. Hey, hey, how you doing? We'll, we'll get Jesse on in just a second too. He's uh, he's at his house, so uh, okay. Well, the, and see what the thing is that right now we're shooting episodes for season four because we're uh, we're gonna uh, debut season four on September eighteenth. We do. Uh, we drop episodes on YouTube every Sunday. So we we pre-record them so that, you know what I mean? So come September 18th, we, we're going to just have like a slew of in, uh, uh, of shows to drop every week for, for like the next couple of weeks. And, and, way to and, do it. and so thank you for being in the building and to, you know, be part of the, the, the rollout of season four because yeah. season four is out the door. Yes, it is. That's fantastic. Excited to be part of season four. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. excited to have you as well we have so many questions um i can't wait for should we wait for your counterpart or I just shot him he, he's coming in right now he's coming in right now yeah i was like i shot him i got off the phone with him a couple of minutes ago so he should be on uh -huh. hey what's up jesse what's going on jesse what's up Shit, you in the house with motherhood sex man? In the building with the <laughs> cannabis school. It is in Surprise. order. Yeah. But yeah. So, oh, this is awesome. Has everybody smoked or am I the only one? Hold uh, on a second. I was just sparking up <laughs> before I jumped way. on. And then I looked and I was like, oh, she's way ahead of me. So <laughs> I've got round two. <laughs> Let's awesome. all catch up. Let's all catch up real quick. Let's all take a second uh -huh. to catch up and breathe Indeed. in the good ganja air. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, yes. Elevate ourselves to the same state. That, that's that. That's that. that, that what, the, what I call it. The 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 the, the, the cannabis virus. The, the cannabis virus. Yes, that's what that cough means. That that's the cannabis <laughs> virus right there. Right, right as it was getting really big with COVID times and um, everyone was wearing masks and that, Jesse and I had done a smoke session and we just left to go to the store to get some munchies. And we're wandering through, not wearing masks, like horrible people that we are. And of course, 
um, Jesse starts hacking up a big lawn, like a <laughs> big old lawn, just because he had taken a huge rip at home. And it just, you know, sometimes it hits you like 20 minutes later and you're just like, got to get it out. That was it. And we're getting all these dirty looks. And it's like, no, this is the cannabis virus. Like, you're okay. Do you yeah. want some? You're good. It's going to chill you exactly. the fuck out. Exactly. Sounds like it. you jealous. You <laughs> basically jealous that you ain't coughing like me. I yeah. mean, I could tell you, I could tell you a story about that, 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 that might, you know, you, you might think it, it, it might be coronavirus based on the fact of the person. Cause first of all, I was on the train. I live in New York city. Oh Lord. That's my child being noisy. But, uh, <laughs> I was on a train living in New York. I live in New York City. I was on the train and there was this bomb. He got on the train and he lit a joint. And when he coughed, I laughed out loud because I was like, yo, I know he's smoking that good, but everybody ran fast. When I tell you people got up and first of all, the fact that he lit something on the train was just right? one. Never mind the fact that he that lit him, and I just I just took a strong draw of something indica-ish just just all up in the throat here and it just it, it, everybody ran for cover and I was just sitting there like oh my god that's the most hilarious thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's like I'm scooting towards that brother like hey I'll take a hit of what you've got. Right. Right, I'm not scared. Oh, everybody hilarious. else was like, "Wait a minute now." Wait you guys can probably tell us about this, but um, the CBD is actually, or T, no, it's CBD is known to fight off um, the coronavirus in the SARS seven or some bullshit like that. Right, whatever. So way, we there, there was um, studies done on mice and that that showed. Um, high doses of CBDA, like the acidic version of CBD, was shown to like fight off that in certain, um, I think it was like a certain type of cell that it was fighting off. But I haven't read any more research recently on that, but I know that when that well, first came out. I will say this though, if you get your vitamins of T, H, and C daily, you'll be able to go through pretty much anything. I mean, you know, bad vibes, See you later, right? Dealing with uh, some dumbass at work, you're good to go. No worries, because you got that TH and C in there. It's the I building mean, blocks of any good person. Vitamins, though. I, I mean, doctors tell you to take your vitamins every day, right? Every day, every day. Yep, and they say <laughs> oh, smoke an apple it. a day, and you'll keep that doctor away. Mm. Exactly. And speaking of doctors, um. I'm pregnant and somebody prescribed metronidazole, excuse me if I'm butchering it, metronidazole. And in my research, it's known to, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's it called? Risk, I don't know if it gives um, a it greater encourages, somebody. It encourages miscarriage. miscarriage. Yes, exactly. And that freaked me uh -huh. the fuck out. And it's like, I'm not taking this pill that I can solve this issue with on a holistic approach. And it's not even the weed that I'm talking about. It's right. um, apple cider vinegar. And it's doing the damn thing. And I don't need to take this shit. But I was like, I just can't believe that they would do that. And then in 20 years, I'm going to have them you know, there's going to be this commercial saying that we need to step forward if there's, there's a lawsuit in order or something. Right? Oh, yeah, girl, I hope not. Honestly, You're like, that I chick really causes hope third not. titty. You don't want that. <laughs> no. Yeah, these motherfuckers are trying to dry my pussy up. No. <laughs> no. And we don't want none of that. We, we don't recommend that at all. Nobody but wants that. Nobody Hell wants no. that. That's Ain't nobody got time on to dry you. pussy. That yeah, that's never that. on the menu. Sandpaper grit shit. No yeah, good. We, 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 <laughs> we have no interest in that. that there's a reason Chris why WAP was a song. I agree. There's a reason yeah. why WAP was a song. But no, let's get serious real quick. How did good. we start cannabis school? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll start it out because, uh, you know, I've heard, we've done this so many different times, but where it actually started from was a mushroom trip from Brandon. And so Brandon, uh, one night called me up around two o'clock in the morning. Right. And it's not usual. Uh -huh. Someone's going to call me up at two o'clock in the morning. It's usually come with $500. Don't ask any questions, but he's, <laughs> right. dead. he's just like, Hey man, we're going to change the world. 
we're going to do it through a podcast. I'm like, all right, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'll talk to you tomorrow. And we sat on this for a good year, right? Yeah. Because we didn't know what to create. And I, um, so I was a producer for podcasts. So I'd work, I'd create shows for another company. And I was like, but they didn't know what, I mean, honestly, they didn't have a lot of what was needed was the creativity. And that's actually what I do really well. So I was like, well, we got to come up with something. So for about four months, we planned this out. Like, what do people want to listen to? And through our our studies, we found that people just want to know more about the plant and not feel like they got to learn how to grow it, learn how to get invested into it, how to sell it, all this other shit. Or just another, you know, let's just talk about that one time I got high, which is cool. But there needs to be something for the consumer. And yeah, after a while, we just started off nervous as shit, uh, judging ourselves the whole time. Like, I can't believe I sound that way. And did you hear how many times I said this word? (laughs) Filler words were the worst at the beginning. Right? But yeah, I mean, Brandon, you know, Brandon's the one who, who brought cannabis into my life. I've been using cannabis now for about seven years. And, you know, he had seen me using medications. We're related through marriage. He's, uh, my wife is his cousin. So he's pretty much my cousin anyways. And yeah, yeah damn near, damn right. near. Right? We're just family. We're family. Absolutely. And, and there's that, a lot of trust there, clearly. Right. And right. I mean, he, he changed my life, changed, changed the way that I looked at what I do, um, what I'm passionate about, which is communication and messaging, marketing. But I, I really wanted to get into that. And I mean, cannabis unlocked that for me. It unlocked it. And we, it, it, when he said, we got to do a podcast about, about fucking weed. I'm like, I don't know who's going to listen to it. And turns out a lot of people, a okay. lot of people. Okay. You know? And as they should. As they should. And how long have you been having the podcast? We just hit our year, June 29th. So oh, we are just a little nice. over a year. It's been exciting. Congratulations, fam. That's what's up, yo. Yeah. Thank We're you. hoping to get to season four like you guys. Hey, yeah, hey, listen. It's been a minute. Just like you, literally this uh, idea came from, first of all, the idea came from Miss Ruby over here. And it was all about, I mean, it wasn't a two o'clock in the morning phone call because we didn't even know each other like that. We just like, we had just met. no, we had just met. If Ruby, if at that time Ruby had called me at two o'clock in the morning, she would have got cussed the fuck out. The fuck out. <laughs> really? Who is this bitch? Why are you calling me? Because of bloody call hours too. Maybe I would have wanted to do it, you know? Is She's that like, an emergency? Put up okay. or shut up. But <laughs> but no, it literally birthed because we we were we it was it was actually a couple of ladies that that we got together. We uh you know she uh, brought the idea to us and and it was just like you know everybody you know not everybody lasted you know throughout the fruition of the idea, but you know I stuck with it because you know it after listening to you know the ideas being exchanged and then you know, going home and smoking one to myself and saying, you know, that a motherhood sex marijuana, I mean, shit, I'm a mother. <laughs> had sex I, I, at least once in my life. I mean, I got kids, you know. I, I definitely smoke a lot. Yeah, 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 let's run with it. Let's run with it. And literally since then, t- and two years later, we're, you know, we're, we're, do- we're trying to do season four. We're trying to, you know, keep this safe space for, you know, for anybody that, that, that smokes weed. It's not just for mothers, it's for everybody that, it's not even just for people that smoke weed, but, but naturally it, it smokers or welcome smokers are, are definitely encouraged to be here, you know? So, so and if you're not a smoker, maybe you should try it. I'm be mighty cool like, if you did. You know, in, 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 in these pandemic streets, you you got to figure out a way to keep yourself happy because, again, the drugs, even aspirin is trying to is trying to depress you. I, I don't know. I, I don't watch the news because of it. I don't, you know, I don't entertain, you know, negativity. And and this space is all about positivity. It's all about welcoming whatever story you have and whatever, you know, you, you know, 
collectively gets you together as long, you know, with cannabis in, involved in it. You know what I mean? So we, we definitely glad to, to, to hear about how, you know, your story began at, at, at two o'clock in the morning, but but no, I just not assumed our story. He was awake we, we definitely still. had a conversation <laughs> at, a, at a reasonable time. At a reasonable time. <laughs> I'm always up. I'm always up. My mind doesn't shut off. And so, you know, I've got to have a really strong indica to be able to put my ass down and just get to that point. Not not completely dead, but around cerebral palsy mode. And uh -huh. so I'm just drooling, making sounds, you know, people need to help sure. me to the bathroom type. <laughs> That's what I want. But yeah, I, I get, I mean, you know, what you guys are doing is, is a valuable service because a lot of, you know, men are always obviously very open about their cannabis use, but just so many women. I mean, look at Olivia Newton-John, you know, I mean, I thought that was the funniest damn thing about her dying was she's like, right before she's about to check out, she's like, weed's amazing. <laughs> and it's just like, how are you going to leave it like that all your life? And they feel wow. like they can't be open about it. And motherhood, especially because, you know, everything is uh, telling women like you need to be uh, more uh, more in the child's life and not in the child's life at the exact same time. They're telling you how you should raise them and how you should be around them and how you shouldn't spank them. I grew up with a Latin father and a mother from, from Massachusetts. My ass got beat. And, you know, I'm glad it did because. Okay. Right. Because they, those types of things, like I got to learn the harder lessons and, and being a mother in these day and age is really difficult and you need something to help you not chill out, but just look at it in a logical way going, you know what? I should be pissed at you right now, but this weed's got me feeling pretty good. I'm just going to try and reason it out. There is a parent looking at it and going, God damn it. Why am I pissed? That was some really stupid shit. I'm going to go smoke mm. and just chill out because obviously I'm the child here. I'll mm -hmm. be back in like 20 minutes. Give me a second. You come back and you go, I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Digging inward. And you know? one thing that I love about medicating myself and enjoying this weed myself, it helps with, um, I keep saying this, but it helps me with my own trauma because I have different trauma responses, you know what I mean? I've noticed about myself. But when I am high as fuck, they tend to be more with reason, you know? I, I don't want to hurt my child's feelings. I might need a moment, but she right. needs me the fuck alone right now because I'm going to get right for all of us. And so I think the conversation and the is the destigmatization. My kids are very aware of my cannabis use. I will not hide it because there's nothing to fucking hide. Uh huh. And so we even talked about uh, my daughter's going to be seven years old. We talked about CBD. She talks about um uh, she asked if she could take some CBD products. And I said, no, not right now, because she knows that I had given some to my stepdaughter. My stepdaughter's 14. And so they helped with her cramps and her back pain. So it's like we have conversations, but it's not like I'm just spoon feeding this to my child. Um, do you have conversations about cannabis openly with your children? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so... Mine's been over a, a journey of time. I started with pens, of course, around my kids just for ease of everything. Um, but there was a day that we were camping and I have a cracked disc in my back. So I use it medically so I don't hurt um, as much as I do normally. And um, we were sitting there and I had my pen, but I had flour and a pipe in my bag. And I figured after the kids would go to bed, I would pull out my pipe and I was sitting there and I just, my back was hurting and it was hurting so bad that I was almost to the point I was in tears. And I cry emotionally. Like my kids don't live here right now. Um, there's a lot of stuff with that, that that part will, I will cry emotionally, but to physically cry from something is, it takes a lot. And so like I was almost in tears and I finally, I sat there and I'm like, if this plant is the same, if this flower is the same as a concentrate, as anything else, 
why does this matter? Why is this any different? And I realized it wasn't. The only difference was my fear around it and my approach and how I educated them. And so at that moment, I was like, hey, do you know that like I use this for my back? It helps with my back. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, do you know that your mom has used it when she has Crohn's and when she had MRSA? Um, it helped with that. And they're like, yeah, it was great. And I'm like, and your uncle Josh, he's got PTSD from in the Marines and things that happened. And you've seen it help him. And they're like, yeah, it's. And so I was able to walk them through and I pulled out the little nug and I said, this is that plant. This plant is what's in here. And I said, but this concentrate, this thing is, it's never as good as the actual plant. And so I can use this and it helps me function to a certain level but I try and not do it around you guys because I don't want you guys to think that I'm smoking and doing something because you guys have seen or heard that like cigarettes is bad for you and smoking's harmful. And so that's the only connotation that there is, is smoking's bad for you, okay? There's nothing of like, hey, this plant, this medicine exactly. helps you chill out, helps you do all of this. And so from that moment on, it became a, let me educate you on this. This is a plant. This plant is medicine. Now, okay. I, I study, I'm a research whore. And so if my mind gets on it's something, yeah, it's I'm a whore. Like, but I don't get paid for it. So what about to say? My, a research yeah. whore? How, how does a research <laughs> whore get paid? Well, he doesn't. Me, anyhow, go on. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> Not working for dollars here, but when my mind gets on something, I will spend however long it takes till my mind feels like I am satisfied with what I have learned from that. And so with cannabis, it just became something that was like, okay, I will educate you. And they were like, well, can we try it? I'm like, no, because right now I can only go off of what I know. And what I know is that while the science is really iffy of what they claim it does to children, um, there is no science supporting that it, like that I can show, hey, THC is great for my child at this stage. And until there's something that I can see, like that's something I, I just can't do, you know? And so I'm like, but I can educate you on all of this. You can understand it. And so now my children, they know what it is. They know that it helps me. And they know that, it's not just for pain. It's for anxiety, stress, depression. It's for dad's having a bad day. He's going to go out back. He'll be back and he's going to be a lot happier. We're going to go do something fun. And uh, he's going to stop snapping over some really stupid shit. So <laughs> that's going to be cool. Hell yeah, dad, you go outside. I'll see you in a few. There are worse things to get addicted to children. And I mean, really, really, happiness, <laughs> right? Really. No, no, I stress. mean... I tried to do a detox this couple of days just to show myself that I could, well, budget wise, number one, show myself that I could have self-control because I never want to put myself in a position again where I'm like, okay, be, this thing that benefits just me is more important than basic needs things, especially with the children. You know, it was just this way to like show myself that I wasn't totally addicted because I would be a total bitch without weed uh, unapologetically. And that's not right either. Well, uh, I, I know girl, I'm more of an well asshole. I hurt more, but that's when I try and do a tolerance break. The last one I did was for 48 hours. And it's because of the same thing. I don't want to feel like I am dependent on anything, that I can just be me. Um, and that even though my back sucks, that I don't need to use cannabis all the time. Yeah, I'm still using cannabis because I'm using CBD, but I'm not getting that euphoria, that high that comes from, you know, THC. So yeah, it's, but it's that understanding of like, we don't want to feel dependent and feeling like, Hey, I can do shit on my own. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, it's like, you know, I, I lean into that when somebody goes, well, are you addicted to it? Like, <laughs> hell yeah, I am. If you knew me <laughs> exactly seven years ago, I mean, even before, I mean, I really didn't like with Brandon for me, 
it chilled me out. I grew up in a household with, you know, my dad was right all the time. You know, I never talked back to my mom. And if you did, you get a mouthful or, or I mean, you get a smacked. mouthful. Man, you got a paddled. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker. Anyway, so. <laughs> oh, no, my <laughs> parents. I got paddled. You <laughs> telling your bees. <laughs> but for me, it, it chilled me out. I'm a, I'm a better dad. I really am. And it's because I'm present, you know, there, we use strains, Brandon and I, to level us out. Just like if you went to a medicine cabinet going, you know, like for me, I abstain from caffeine, not because I have to, but well, yeah, because I have to, uh, because I, I put myself into full-blown panic attack a year ago and I had to cut that out. I went for a full month, no THC, no CBD, no anything. And coming back was awesome, but at the same time, it showed me that even when I'm off for a little bit, you know, it, it gave me perspective. It gave me like time to be able to look at myself saying, man, that was a shitty thing to say. Like, I don't know why you say it just because you're hurt. And it's helped me be more of an adult, whatever the fuck that means. But whatever being an adult is, it, that helps me to achieve that in a better light. You know, it's like um, we live in an area with it's predominantly a, a certain Christian religion, right? Mm -hmm. And most of those people pass judgment, you know, the real hardcore, you know, holy roller Jesus freaks. And they go, nope, you got to be like this. And uh, I'm like, hey, you, you want to be more like Jesus? <laughs> hey man, smoke this because that's going to chill you out. You're going to start. Exactly. Right. I, I mean, I'm going to tell you like this, my story, when it comes to, to, to weed, I mean, I was introduced to weed issue in the worst way i was a teenager i was cutting school i was at a, at a boy's house i was drinking therefore uh, uh, being past the blunt it was just like hey why not let's do that too you know what i'm saying but and and with my kids i literally i i never i never felt the need like first of all my oldest daughter is 24 I have three daughters. One is 24, 13, and seven. And for a long time, it was just me and my daughter. So it, it didn't seem to me to, to, like a, a big deal enough to hide it from her or to, it was just, it was always there. Like, like she was like, when my friends would come over, I, I shoot, I had a, a small apartment. So at the, at the same time, it wasn't no place where she had her own room. It was like, she had her section. So it, we were in our section and our section was cloudy. And, and it is what it was, <laughs> you know what I mean? And now that she's a 24 year old grown woman, you know, she's a, 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 a whole chimney just like me. I mean, you can catch her on, on, on any train station and, and, and puff her little pen like, what? I don't care. While handling this, what are you gonna do? Wild this is what you, shut up. You know that that that's her. You know what I mean? And it was just and and I felt like the re doing it like that made it it made it normal within my household. Like they like my kids know that yes, I'm smoking. That's when I'm calm. If I'm not smoking, you might want to back up off me. But, Don't know. fuck with mama. Yeah, yeah, but oh, it, mom, look, I brought you this nice joint. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Up, I'll be back I, with my report card in. Oh, I've got, oh, I've minutes. gotten weed as a birthday present. I definitely from a oh, twenty-four year yeah. old. She definitely has given weed, weed as a birthday present because it's, she when knows you get older, you know what dad likes. Beautiful. <laughs> exactly that's fantastic for me it was later on i i i still was more worried about them and how they perceived me and when i came turns and, and told them i was like hey look um you know how i'm more calm now and they're like yeah you know how i don't just fly off the handle and say who fucking did this and who made this fucking mess <laughs> and they're like yeah let me show you this this is this is what i use that's it and i said this is a plant no, you cannot use it. I said, I'm happy to give you CBD. We we found recently a, an amazing company that is just top-notch CBD we've ever tried. And it is amazing. I give it to my kids. They even ask for it every day. They're like, hey, can I have my CBD? Nice. And I'm getting them involved that way because I told them, they're like, why can't I use the one you have right now? It's like, well, you're still developing. Your mind's still developing and mm -hmm. I don't want you to get into it. 
I was like, not to say that it would do anything really bad to you, but let's wait for that. Let's right. just wait for that. Why don't you be a kid right now instead of be like, yeah, I got to go home because my biology test is fucking freaking me out. I got to smoke this real quick. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You ain't got to go. First of all, you don't know what stress is yet. Yes. Start figuring out bills and shit. And then you can start telling me about stress. But, work. Right? Just exactly. Be a kid. Be a kid. Don't be worrying about adult shit. And that's all, honestly, and they know, and that's cool. If they smell it, that's cool. If I'm outside in the back puffing on my vaporizer, hey, they know. They're just like, oh, dad's doing his thing. And it's not weird to them because here's the funny thing is that when I go out in the business world and I'm talking to people, they go, hey, what do you do? I'm like, well, I smoke pot for a living. And they're awesome. Like, what? And I'm like, yeah, let me show you my podcast. And all this is that they go, okay. Oh, for real? Yes. Yeah. Now, now, where is your pot? Is like, do you have a, a YouTube channel or do you have like a, a Spotify? How, how does it work? So we just, we've never really done YouTube because ours has only been audio. Um, but I finally moved everything and uploaded us all onto YouTube. But we've been across every other podcast platform. So we're on Spotify, Apple really anywhere you go find your podcast um so yeah oh yeah, we're... okay if you go cool. type in cannabis on apple or spotify we top up we're just up at the top it's cannabis school so Hell yeah yeah so we're currently number one on apple and spotify so anywhere here in that one and we grew ours super fast uh by six months in we were the number one we dropped down to number three for a day and then the next day it went back up to number one. It's always been at number one. Um, and, and not for like a bragging reason is the number one thing is we want to educate other cannabis users. We've had so many conversations with people. They're like, I've been smoking weed for 30 years and I didn't know there were a difference. It's, yeah, I hey, treat it like medicine. Let, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, because I grew up in, in New York, the, the most weed that I've, uh, you know, um, encounter was just like you know chocolate and then there's like you know a purple haze and things of that nature but the the time that i lived in seattle because that's how me and ruby mm -hmm. met because i lived in seattle for about seven years and literally just going into stores and getting questioned about you know uh what you what you want indica or, or sativa and it's like i don't know is how much it costs like <laughs> I mean, and I don't really care what it's called or what it does, because of course they they were the happy. They, they that was the best part of living there, just having these happy people ready to explain all the different features of any kind of weed that was in front of you, and you just looking at them like, bro, I don't care. How much is it? How much is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't have their prices out. No, the, the the no the they would have the price. You would know what the price is, but at the same time, wow. is is that it, it, like it would have different names and you know. First of all, again, New York City before I, I, I moved up huge there, difference. Before yeah, before I moved up there, I was buying nickel bags, dime bags, twenty bags. Going up there and, and having somebody tell you, okay, this is a three point five. I'm looking at them like, what's that? Oh, I got to do math to figure what yeah, that is because right. is that a fat twenty or is that a yeah. You're like, where's your dime bag dime? section? Like, no, I'm, I need to know yeah. if it's a fat 20 or it's a skinny dime. I need you to explain it to me in yeah. New York lingo. <laughs> yeah, well, because it's so different. The first time I went into a dispensary, I was like a kid in a candy shop because all I'd ever done is gone to my buddy up in Salt Lake and gone, hey, I want some dank shit. And he's like, all right, cool. Well, I went to Colorado, so let me look. And he's pulling out these dispensary containers going, I've got this strain, this strain, this strain. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, I'll take that stuff looks dank. And that stuff smells really dank. And it was when I was finally, go I was getting like half an ounce twice a week from him. And I'm like, fuck, this costs more than it's worth. Like, I just got to go to Colorado and get my own. Because he was like, just go to this dispensary. This is where I get it from. You can go right here. And I'm like, Okay, so I did. And it was like game changer walking in there and actually seeing all of it. Because when I first bought cannabis when I was 18, um, it was literally like, hey, let's go in. Uh, it's 50 bucks for a little bag. 
you go over, he's got some really dank shit or he's got some shitty shit. Yeah, we lost Ruby. Yes, yeah, I think yeah, she'll be right back. It's probably uh she, she got she running is, she right is. now. She's like, fuck, I gotta go get some chips. I'll be back. <laughs> But no, but 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 no, a little bag for fifty dollars. Lord have mercy. What year was this? What? Uh, hang on. So it like highway 2006? robbery. What is no, this? No, it was an eighth. So I got an eighth for fifty bucks. Oh. oh okay. And like out in Utah at the time, uh, it wasn't terrible, and it was Granddaddy Purple back in two thousand six. Um. And that was the first strain I ever smoked. And then after that, I remember going and getting some other, like it was like 60 bucks for a quarter ounce. And then I remember looking at the bag and it was like sticks and stems mm. and like seeds and shit. Mm. And no, just, just total garbage. And now I go to a dispensary or like you can go in, just, it's a whole nother game. And the stuff's not even the same as what you would get 20 yeah, years ago. I, I feel you guys on, on the sense of that. What I really got into was the sensations that I would get, right? So since since we talk about sex on this podcast. There you go. Uh -huh. Right? Right. Uh, so like one of my favorite from, for me and my old lady is Skittles. That is the, the strain that's like, you want to take this up to another level. Like, you know, uh, we're both laying there, not able to move after, right? That's what I'm talking about. And there are certain strains that I've had like before, and it just, I don't know what it does. It puts me a little bit more into a panic, or maybe I'm just not feeling it, or I just can't get there. Mm -hmm. That it, That's no good. So it's like, okay, trying to be able to figure out what's going to match my experience. Everything's got to be an experience. Like I'm a writer, so I'm constantly trying to put myself in that state. I can't smoke indica on that. No mm -hmm. way. I won't do anything. And so I start thinking about the strains and how they affect me. And mm -hmm. if if I want to get a little strange, right? If I if I'm me and my old lady just like, look, let's make this one awesome. Let's, we're gonna go out there. Tried so many different strains, but Skittles as of recent. Let me mm -hmm. tell you. And is that Skittles with a Z? Yep. Skittles. Oh, it is. This is Skittles. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had that. And see, oh, the, and, and see the thing is, with, with New York City, the way that things are going, because I, I, I'm I'm assuming both of y'all on the West Coast, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're both on the West Coast. We're right. in, Utah. in the yeah. West. Oh, so, in shit. The, in the West. Yeah. You are so awesome. You know what? I have most, I have a lot of family in Utah. Everybody's Mormon. I'm the black sheep that uh, has disassociated myself with the church. Huh. But hey, more power to the Mormons. Me too. Yeah. But I'm the green sheep of the family. Okay. There you go. Hey, and the green sheep is the good. We have the best the hearts. You know what I mean? We're the real uh, spiritual ones. These are the motherfuckers that are just on some. I don't know. Hey, whatever program you choose, just do it. Okay. Just right. yeah. it over there. My whole family <laughs> is like, I love them all still, you know? Well, yeah. that, that's where I'm different on that side. So I am a part of that church, but I am on that side of being able to get people to be a little bit more open minded. Um, I love that. that and now so see, now see, that's that why I talk good, about that's this good. You know what I'm saying? Because that means that there's that there's some level of acceptance there, obviously. Well, oh yeah. Exactly. I freaking love I love that we're talking about this. Okay, so I served a mission, long story short, since we're on the subject. Okay. Where'd I went serve? to Nicaragua. Uh Nicaragua, which is how uh -huh. hablo espanol. So one thing I'll never do is diss the church in the way of blah blah blah. I disassociated myself. Because as I told my stake president who came to my apartment, I said, I love women. I am in the, actually, I uh, had a girlfriend at the time. I said, what my relationship with her is the exact opposite of what the plan is. And right now I have to do what's right for me. 
And that was just, just what I said. My mom has served two missions for the church. She's like devout, die hard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We kind of clown her sometimes like, damn, okay, get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's her program and that's what works for her. Um, she stumbled across this podcast and she was mortified. She's like, please take it off. You're smoking weed and talking about sex. I said, I will not. I'm sorry, but I will not. This is not for you then. And so those it's are like, the people that so need it the tough. most. Yeah. Hey, you said man, it. Man, listen. I my family's fifth generation Mormon. So man, like I, I hey, this is so deep. I literally yeah. had a, 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 I think a, the first episode. Matter of fact, I think it was the first episode of season one that mm -hmm. that we did and it dropped on mother's day we 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 basically uh, debuted everything on mother's day and i don't know uh, but i i had just to, to go back on family like literally our episode i think it was like maybe like three hours long because we we had like a part one and a part two and baby out of three hours Somebody decided to pick out a 10 minute segment or, or maybe a five minute segment where I was talking about my father and I was talking about something that I, I like something I did and I was just or something he said. And I was just like, yeah, if it wasn't for my father, I would I would have cussed him out because it sounded stupid. And literally that little ten, that little 10 minute, two minute, whatever I said was pulled out and, and, and brought back in my face like, oh. Really, is that what you say? I was like, "Well, did you watch the show?" Because that's out of context. You all that. You could watch the, rest. the show. You could have watched the whole episode if you was gonna pull ten minutes. Like, like this is not. That's again. This is the reason why this play, this this space exists. It's about non judgment and 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 right for somebody to be outside and judging. It's like it's like listen, you you don't understand you don't understand the process. You don't understand why we exist. You don't understand why we are we are actually getting views because people uh, uh, people feel exactly kind of like how we feel. People enjoy and being uh, and being able to have this space available. You know what I mean? And just like y'all, like whatever, like like what y'all do on on your station or on your channel, it's it's needed. Therefore, that's why people are listening to it. So, Correct. so my thing, my one thing that I would like to ask you about is this, because I think if anything, this is one thing that no matter where we live at is, is definitely something that's affecting all of us. And that's with, you know, cannabis and it being legal and how legal is, it, how legal it actually is. Now, first of all, in New York City, yes, they claim it's legal. However, <laughs> the dispensaries that are currently open they they don't want them to be open they because none of them they haven't given out the licenses for them to be open and so the but the, but the fact is that they are wide open i mean you can literally google weed in new york city and you can see mobile trucks parked on any block or any in anywhere in new york city these people are out there everybody's out nobody's hiding so it's so so our my whole approach on it was okay weed is legal you want me to buy it but where i'm supposed to buy it from if the people that are selling it is, is illegal so it, it's just like back in the day when we wasn't illegal when we was illegal and I was buying it from the basement. I mean, shoot, it ain't stopped me from going in the basement. I mean, I knew it was in the basement. <laughs> right. I knew I had to get it. I went in the basement, went and got it. I mean, like, mm. so we're just tell me where the shit's at, me. right? Just let me know what I'm going in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> tell so, me where but I gotta now, go. If, instead of a basement, I'm not, there's no basement. It's a, it's a, it was a storefront. It's it, if it, Hey, 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 no, absolutely not. You're making too much noise. Get out. Sorry about that. My <laughs> child is being rude. Get out. Totally get it. But no, you, you know, but now it's not in the basement. It's a storefront. Now it's a, it's a truck. Now it's a entrepreneur on the corner with a table. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I don't know if y'all been to New York City, but I'm done. I'm done. Not recently. You'll, no. you'll get, you'll, 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 you'll get some good, you'll get some good shit out here. But what I'm saying is, 
is what is it how getting is it better where you live like 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 what's the the cannabis legal illegal levels in where you are uh, and it, and have you talked to people that you know have to you know deal with it in different states and things of that nature yeah definitely it's um it was really rough at first brandon's got a lot of the details on that it was really rough because uh, predominantly the, the LDS religion was very against it. Uh, but where it started becoming legal in other states, especially California, and a lot of their members were very open about using it because it was easy to get a medical marijuana card out there. Uh, like one of our favorite skits from, uh, 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 what's his name? Tom Segura. And he was over there. He's like, yeah, I heard this one guy, he's getting his medical card and he comes in, starts talking to the doc, goes, doc goes, why do you need mar medical marijuana? He goes, you know, I just like the way it makes me feel. And he's like, <laughs> all right, here you go. He wrote him out a thing. He's like, and he came in there with the story. He's like, my eyes hurt. He's like, your eyes hurt. What do you mean? Yeah, they just hurt. Or if I smoke, I feel better. He's like, all right, I guess. Like they're giving out <laughs> cards pretty openly. In Utah, it wasn't like that. It was like really stringent. Like you either had to be on the verge of death. You're, you know, there's all these stipulations since then though. Um, Cause we didn't, we weren't medical card holders at all in this state because we're just like why and we didn't care anyways because half the cops are smoking it too they don't care most mm -hmm. of the time they find it on you they'd be like all right well i'm gonna let you off with the warning well, can i have a weed bag so i'm gonna let you off with the warning because it's the way it's gonna be you are like all right yeah i mean that's that's a given that's what we're expecting but i think nowadays it's it's really accepted uh, not only by church members, I mean, there's a lot of their stigma there, but as well as a lot of the entrepreneurs, we're in the second largest entrepreneurial uh, type of state for technology. And everybody, I mean, any 22 year old kid who's trying to, he's, he's super woke and he wants to tell me about everything else. I'm like, ah, all right. I grew up during a different time, but I mean, I'm in my forties, dude. That's not, that ain't going to roll with me. But as soon as he says, yeah, but I smoke cannabis, we got a connection. We could talk about it. it. It lets go of everything, all those stigmas. But the laws were really rough. And, and Brandon knows a lot more about as far as how it was then and how it's accepted now. Yeah, we used to have just, um, like you said, it was the basically you had, it was a terminal illness. And I want to say it was like 60 or 90 days to live kind of thing. And yeah. with no other thing. And then you got experimental access to it until I think it was four years ago, we pushed for the Prop 2 initiative and went and, I went and collected signatures for it. I know a ton of people in Utah did. And um, we got the signatures for it to put the ballot initiative through. And right before it was supposed to go through, um, the legislature actually changed it. Um, so right now there is medical access still to patients. You're not allowed to put flame to flower or like, um, torch to dabrig kind of thing. You're allowed to use vaporizers, edibles, tinctures, um, things like that. So topical, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Topicals. And then, um, the amount of qualifying conditions they did just approve um, conditional approval, which I didn't go and read the actual law on it fully, but um, basically I think with conditional approval from your doctor and that you could get permission to get a card still. Um, because before the handful of um, qualifying conditions really didn't include a ton. So chronic pain lasting longer than two weeks is of course on there. And um like PTSD is on there, um, Crohn's, like autoimmune Autoimmune's, disorders, yeah. um, things like that, of course. Uh, Parkinson's, uh, actually, I don't think Parkinson's is included on Utah's um, cancer. And we How really about don't... depression and ADHD? Mm -mm. Oh, nope. damn, that sucks. So, yeah, anxiety, depression, stress is what should be on there as well, but they don't include that because then that'll be everyone and everyone could be on medical marijuana and that'd be terrible because people would be logical and chill and like not dicks all the time i mean jesus I apparently that, that it's still on that reefer madness video yeah <laughs> that would, well it's that true would, though. that would just destroy everyone
So on the reefer madness thing, like like I said, I come from fifth generation Mormons, very kind of, I love you guys, but you're dogmatic as shit sometimes. Um, and <laughs> like I've had just, I had discussions with my father for years and about educating him on cannabis. And it was really just arguments for the longest time until my grandma had been, she had had these chronic migraines, like crazy migraines for a year. And she had tried all these medications and they wouldn't go away. And so they, she, she was on, it's the strongest um, thing you can be prescribed. I can't think of what it is. This oxy, not oxycodone, but the, um, whatever Oxycontin? those. No, stronger than that. It's the oh, fentanyl. Um, fentanyl. So she was prescribed fentanyl. <laughs> oh my and God, fentanyl. She was on See, that this is what for I'm like, saying, like six days. And my my um, dad's wife, she had prescribed medical cards down in Arizona. And she was like, well, have you talked to your son about cannabis? And so he calls me up and was like, hey, can you make grandma edibles? And I'm like, no. I mean, yes, but no. Like, I'm not <laughs> just going to make grandma edibles. Like, so I said, I will come over and I will educate her about cannabis. And then I will answer any question that she has. And then after that, if she still wants me to, then I will make her edibles. And we'll start really low and I will dose her. Mm -hmm. And so I went over and we had a couple hour conversation and my dad and my grandma, who have both been very, not hard-headed against it, but just taught a lot of wrong, incorrect information over the years. Mm -hmm. And when that's all they have in their head is incorrect information, it's just fear around it. Right. And so going over, I was able to remove that fear and just kind of help her realize that this medication is just like any other medication that she's had but a lot less harmful because no one's overdosed on this crap. And no one will. Okay, and no one will ever overdose on this. Yeah. No, because when they, I've looked at studies and they're like, we tried to find it in rats <clears throat> and they've never found. So, <clears throat> Jesus Christ, sorry. <laughs> There's a, in studies. May he bless like, you. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's a study with medications and it's called like the LD-20 and it's what percentage of like what dose of medication does someone or an animal or whatever have to take before 50% of the people taking it die. And there is no LD-20 period for cannabis because when they were testing it, they could never find a dose even on rats that would kill them. What they estimated this is all hypothesis, of course, because this is fucking insane. But they hypothesize that if a human being could smoke 10 to 15,000 one gram joints in a one minute period, you might be able to die. Not even Good, luck. Wait, if for, Good no, fucking luck. In one minute? What kind of speed <clears throat> smoking, speed dating? Who no. who wants to speed date weed? It's, no, it's just that's what it sound like. It sound like somebody trying to speed uh, date weed. And uh uh no I uh, uh no girl we married we just it's we the just impossibility be of it. You look at it and yeah, go to be together. Like no human can ever smoke that much. <laughs> exactly. It's possible. Yeah, you will pass out long before you can ever fucking smoke that much. You will pass out. Yeah. How are and you going to smoke the rest? everything in your cupboard in your pantry? Yeah, <laughs> right. it's not happen. I actually have to point something out. We three, Brandon, are feeling it, but you, my friend, need a little bit more because we're all slant eyed and you're over there <laughs> bright eyed. I don't have any edibles that are like a thousand milligrams. I've been puffing, I'm working on it. And I have one of my flowers. Definitely. I love the ganja too. You know, speaking of which, it was so hard for me to find weed in, um, in, in Utah when I was visiting my family. Do you guys have to go to, uh, when was it Wendover? No. No. Okay. Um, 
there is like there's mesquite and windover and that but really i feel like if you are going to cross a border you might as well go to colorado you can go to dinosaur colorado you're like three hours away from any major city usually yeah. and it's that pretty good price stuff. there is going to be cheaper but if you're going to invest the time and the money i'd go to denver there's a ton more stuff a ton more selection like and you'll get better quality and yeah. it's tons cheaper California is where the, the best stuff. I mean, West Coast. Hey. West Coast. I, Sorry, I got to say it. It is the <laughs> best. I see that face. Come on now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. I agree. I absolutely agree because, again, again before, because uh, I moved to Seattle in 2013. And before then, I was, me and Reggie were good, good friends. And then I went to Seattle and got really, really bougie. And so oh, yeah. now coming back to New York, you know, yes, uh, a lot of the, the these dispensaries are trying. They, you know, they they try, but the fact is, there. you know, that it, it, it's not the same because they're not knowledge like that, and nor do they, you know, make themselves required, you know, to to be knowledge like that. You know, half the time they'll tell you, you know, it, it, it's a sativa when it's when it's really an indica or 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 a hybrid. You know what I mean? Or, or, or fuck around. They, they don't even know how to spell Jack Herrera right. You know what I mean? Like we, yeah. you know, honestly, my that. husband had to literally, literally bought some Jack Herrera and looked at and looked at homeboy as he as once he looked at the bottle and was like, "Oh wait, you you spelled this wrong." But I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that this is spelt wrong, but. You My husband is very knowledgeable. You're like, strain, I need to talk yeah. to whoever does your marketing because whatever fucking strain he's smoking, I want it. Right. <laughs> so high, you can't even fucking spell. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I will take it. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting cross eyed for days. i come high too. <laughs> but hey, it was, it, hey, it was reasonably priced. It, it, and, at the, and at the end of the day, because I, I came from the promised land where, where things are very plentiful and explained, you know, you got to take with what you get. You know what I mean? It, Have it, you it, seen it, better quality out in New York? The, we're getting to that point where we, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to evolve into real dispensaries. But at the same time, you know, New York City is, is, is technically not, they technically ain't supposed to be there, but they're there and, and we all buying from them. Let me just tell you that. We all buying from them. Well, that's what you oh, quality yeah. improving. Hmm? Everyone talked at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is the quality improving in New York? Oh, absolutely. It definitely is. You know what I mean? I mean, yes, you got to watch out for the, for, for the entrepreneurs with the CBD. I mean, honestly, <laughs> you know, the entrepreneurs sometimes be having CBD and sometimes they have the, the, the real shit and they, they overprice it, especially if they're like, you know, they got their table in Times Square where, where all the yeah. tourists be passing through and they just figure they could tell a tourist it's $90 for this eighth. And and you just looking at him like, mm -mm. I was like, Wait, no, can you, you smell it though? Because I'm gonna give like you forty dollars and smell let you go it. Your bed. You could tell if it's hemp if you can smell it. Like hemp does. I've never smelled a CBD flower that smells like cannabis. Like no, 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 uh, no, sir. I have to tell you that the entrepreneurs of New York City have created a smell, a spray that you can spray the CBD and make it smell like it when you first buy it and you open it and they tell you, here, smell it, you buy it and then you get home, you smoke it and it's not, it don't get you hot. Mm -hmm. You sick fucks. There's a yeah. dirty corner in hell going, with I, like pegboards and all sorts of shit. To me already, okay? I'm telling you because it's happening to me, okay? I'm telling you, okay? Oh, God. No, like, because the entrepreneurs, you know, they, they, you know, like I said, that the New York City is full of them. It, it, there's a reason why we call it the city that never sleeps. That the, the 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 hustlers is always trying to get you. So you, you know what I mean. Once you find somebody that definitely has the the weed that you want, and also has the weight that you want, because one of the things that we've called out, 
mm. is, you know, weight when weight is not correct because my husband has had to buy a scale and be like, uh uh, this, this is supposed to be 7.0, oh, it's a 6.9, it's not the same, it's not the same. Uh, it's not the same. Uh, I tell you, I, no, I give you my money. I don't miss those and days. You're supposed to give me the weight, and, you know, give me the weight, and I don't like that, you know? So, yeah. You know, another thing, again, another thing that with that I was used to in Seattle, used to being on the West Coast where, you know, it's regulated. It has to be 3.5. It has to be an indica if it says it's an indica. It has to be the name of whatever you call it because that's what you call it. And that's what, and, and the name of it, the, 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 the farm it came from when it was born, how, what time it arrived at the store, all of that is on the label, that kind of thing. You know, I miss that. I'm, I'm, mm. Oregon does do some good shit. I will give them that. And I love how they actually label everything. And they always have like their COA attached. They've done some stuff right. I do like that. I just think it's hard for them. Humboldt County just has such good shit. That's it. Agreed. Like aside from that, I love what Oregon has. I really do. I'm smoking on some Oregon shit right now. I just relocated here recently, Portland. Um, I'm not mad at it. Um, price is going to be the price, you know, we get yeah. dick down on the sales tax, but, um, or the tax, excuse me. Um, but I am smoking on super glue right now. And that shit got me heavy. Mm, I can see that. Yes. Your eyes are ready. Just like, <laughs> you're like, look, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I want to do, but it, it ain't whatever the fuck you want it to do. Cause I'm just like, I just want to chill and yeah. do whatever comes to me. Indeed. So you're rocking it's true. Some Indeed. glue. So, uh, so what's Jesse. the future for uh, for cannabis school? So we're growing this right now into uh, making this our main thing, so we can be able to actually live off this. And uh, we've got several different sponsors that are really interested in us. But our biggest thing is to be able to keep creating even better content than what we're doing right now. We're doing only audio, but we want to build. Uh, we really want to do the full video experience as well as creating other types of experiences. We actually um, produce podcasts as well. We help create and produce other podcasts. So that's become a really big thing for us as well. But future-wise, it's just continuing to be able, because there's so many strains, it's, it's, it's really difficult to say like, oh, yeah, but, you know, you're going to run out of content soon. Uh-uh. Oh, fuck you, that. Um. Shit, we not we ain't run. We literally just started two years ago. We ain't run out of content. We've been creating content. Just first of all, we've been able to create content just off the cuff, based on the fact of how cannabis is growing in New York City. Because first of all, there's a lot of different events happening, like that that you know that involve cannabis. So therefore, you know, it allows the entrepreneurs in order to you know, be able to sell their weed or sell, you know, edibles or, 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 or anything that they're doing that is, that's involved in cannabis. So that alone is one of the things that, that we've been involved, like, like, for instance, we, um, one of the place, uh, I, we went to as, as a podcast and just because it was Mother's Day is a place called Stone Pizza, a place where they just, where everything they, they serve is infused with cannabis and it, and literally, the, the 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 whole secrecy of the place was that it, the, the, it didn't even have a sign outside the door. Like like you had to just use GPS to tell you that oh you're here, come on in, just open that door and see if, if you, you know you know. And, and then they see you know you go in there and you smell weed. You're like oh okay yeah I'm in the right place. I'm mm. in the right place. You know what I mean? Or the other day where. I went to like a cannabis variety show where it was like in this little small room and everybody was smoking. And, and of course it was, it was, uh, uh people were, there was rappers and, and singers and, and, and comedians too. But the, the way the room was so small, like literally everybody was in there smoking. So, it, so you was going to walk out of there stumbling regardless be, no, no, never mind whatever you smoking plus whatever everybody else is smoking and they were selling weed so it's just like you know 
Based on it smells that, so fresh. It, it, there's there's <laughs> not enough content to talk about. You know what I mean? And, oh, yeah. and and just just in general, just just the shit. Fuck it. And my my life, as far as I'm concerned, my life is interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna be talking about it on oh, the yeah. podcast as a mama, and, and, and somebody's gonna watch this. So it's just like so, so definitely, is your show is gonna grow in the same way. And 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 you should definitely, you know, if, if like you said, if, I don't know if you you said if, if you that you're on YouTube yet, but if you're not, shit, YouTube is definitely ha- has um. It has a growing rate for us. I mean, shit. Yes, they 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 think we selling weed, but fuck it, we not selling weed. We smoking it. You know what I mean? They'll yeah, figure it out. Totally and, different. And eventually, you know, the sponsors will come and all of that. Yeah, so like you know, we're just smoking. That's it. And you know what I love, guys, is that just knowing that our bodies itself knowing more about how our body function, like our and the endocannabinoid system within our bodies. You know, these are conversations that we don't talk about enough and how, and it's like, well, that's why I'm so relaxed. It helps to relax my nervous system. And I think it's so crucial. And I love what you guys are doing because there's such a depth of knowledge just with what kind of, when it comes to these cannabinoids itself. We talk about THC and CBD, yeah, but what about these other ones like CBA, C, I mean, CBN, CBG. Mm-hmm. CBG is the happy, you know, cannabinoid and CBN helps with sleep. And there's so many different ones that I don't think we've, we've even scratched the surface. And I think it's just important to have these conversations and to share with us because as weed is so communal and it should be shared, so should the information. And so what would you guys suggest? Um, Have you heard of the strain Cheetah Piss? Oh, she went there. We did a strain (laughs) review on Cheetah Piss. What is it? We did a strain review on Cheetah Piss. Ah, Okay, what is it? What can you tell us? I... Love cheetah piss. <laughs> it's <laughs> fucking delicious. I, I, I like it in I my had mouth. It once. I definitely had it once. It was, it was the shit. I can say that. Yeah. Right? Because I, I we we heard about it <clears throat> from another YouTuber. Was Eric Tran? Eric Khan. Him? Khan. Thank you, Eric Khan. And that was like the stoniest review. And I was like, cheetah piss. It's fucking smoking cheetah piss. Stuff smelling like piss. And then <laughs> Brandon's like, I got cheetah piss. I was like, oh, well, let's spark it up. It was so good. Very clear, very heady, high, but just felt good. Felt happy. Man. Oh, such I'm- a euphoric strain. I love right. that one. Oh, mm-hmm. That's what one of the reviews that we gave on YouTube is that that was like the one for Valentine's Day. If you wanted to get frisky, just as you were saying, that oh, strain yeah. worked for you. Dang, I was horny as fuck. And I don't know if because I did this video, <laughs> what I was, but shit, whoever I was doing, because I am polyamorous, I'm very openly that way. Um, I figure as a bisexual woman anyway, if I have to label myself, I'm going to be by, bi- you know, poly anyway. And yep. it's just about honesty. It's about just telling your partners, having the respect for them and telling them what it is. That's why I don't have drama in my life. Everyone knows what it is. And I know what it is with everyone. Mm-hmm. And so what I meant by that is whoever I was fucking at that time was getting it, getting it good. Let's just say that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember Cheetah Piss was quite the like. <laughs> yep. It was quite the strain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's my favorite. Hell All yeah. Right, I paid $50 wait. for that. Shit. All right. Yeah. So now that we're talking about after the ones that we like, have we ever talked about on air a strain that we didn't like and then got I don't full like green crack. Did, did you get any flag for it from, from your audience? Mac one. We talked about Mac One, but yeah, we had we it shit in this all over it. Distillate <laughs> extract form, and yeah, we did. We shit all over it we because it was like hated it. Oh God! Or like Why? Sunday, fucking Utah Sunday Driver was like we Awful. puffed on that all day long. And my girlfriend is she's so green she can smoke like a little hit, and she's good, which is fantastic yeah, for her. Cool for them. Like I fucking wish I could do that, but you know I can't. So instead, I smoke all day, and that's just what we do. So, but 
um, she smoked Sunday Driver all day long with us, like all day long. Every time it was passed around, she smoked, and I'm like, "But what is this? Like, is this hemp? Like, oh. like what is this shit?" And it was this Sunday Driver from Utah out here, and I'm like, oh, "No." And then we got Sunday Driver um, in flower from Humboldt County. It was some good shit. Yeah, it was like oh, thank uh, God, because I was saying I like that strain. Yeah, totally different. But Mac one we shit on, and then one of our listeners was like, "Oh, you've clearly never tried it." I'm like maybe not, but what we had was shit. So yeah, unless we it was in a, a distillate. Yeah. It was Cali. It was from California. I mean, always expect real, real high expectations for everything coming out of Cali, whether it's in a cart or a flower or even edible. Uh, but it, it wasn't good for me. It was uh, Bubba Kush. I can't handle Bubba. Bubba Kush put me into a full blown panic attack. Uh, nope, can't do it. And and I could probably have a really good experience on it now, but it was at the time, and it's just associated with that. It's like my son. He still to this day he's fifteen and will not eat spaghetti because he threw up when he was around ten, and it was just all spaghetti. So he's like, nope. I associated with that. The same with me. Bubba Kush, somebody pulled that out going, would you like some? So what is it? Oh, I don't know. Well, then I will not touch it. Because if it's if it's that, I'm going to be in a bad place. Now, I mean, I carry CB with me everywhere. But now it's just, at that time, nope. Nope. But, man, you guys are talking about cheetah piss. That's, that's... I feel it. I feel it. I ask because uh, we, uh, well, the time that I did, with, that me and my husband went to Stone Pizza, we actually bought Remy Ma strain pussy charms because apparently I don't know if you know Remy Ma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, just and I don't just, know pussy I, charms. Instead of just keep talking, I just want to make sure you know Remy that Ma. That sounds is like a an amazing strain, <laughs> or an Ma, amazing cereal. Remy Ma is a rapper, and, I and, and, she, and she has a, a and she she got her uh her her new strain of weed and it's called pussy charms. Mm -hmm. And so me and breakfast, my husband lunch, and dinner. It. And it was crap, and um, I got on the channel uh, and talked about it, and everyone associated me to saying that I was hating on her, and and it was all about me talking about her, and I was trying to you know jump on her or some kind of bandwagon or something, and it was just like, bro, I, 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 this had nothing to do with her. The, the we we bought it, we didn't like it, we talked about it. End the story. Yeah, you know, like the flower was just weak sauce, man. It didn't do it for me. It didn't Stand, do it for shut up. Priced and under -del delivered is what happened there. Basically, uh, exactly, and it was overpriced because it was like eighty dollars for the gram. Using your celebrity, uh, how was the high? Not okay. It, it, it was it, it was low as fuck. It was just like we had to smoke something else in order to feel something. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. So it's like not smoking at all then. Uh, that's disappointing. Disappointing. Oh. Oh. It I died. Know. Disappointing. Exactly. But yeah, that that was just the the, the whole thing. It was just it, it was ridiculous. But that sucks. And, and and we literally got like real hate, like real hate. Like it was like people in the comments talking shit, and it, it got to the point where I, I just pinned the comment like, "Hey, if you're gonna hate, you might as well subscribe." <laughs> you know, just, no, if, if you're gonna back keep to coming back to come dick. comment every time you have, you, I have something to say because I have something to say. I don't think we've ever caught. I'm just like, going to let you hit that subscribe button real quick. Hit that notification. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. no, we did get a great one star review. Oh yeah, uh, yeah I think we, that was the most hate that we've received. Let's see if we can okay. pull it up. It makes yeah, we me... brought on a guest, and um, apparently that guest made them mad because they were an anti vaxxer At least that's what they were claiming, and all this other stuff. And it was just an entrepreneurial woman who is big into cannabis and helping women in cannabis to make really successful businesses. Mm -hmm. And we got hated for that. Here we and, go. you know, the only thing I feel about that, if anybody's going to start hating, I don't feed trolls. Mm -hmm. You can fuck, you can fuck right off. Right. Um, I don't care. Right. I'm not going to be sitting there shaving my balls. About, oh, I can't believe they said that about me. 
It's right. not we're going to be smoking. Not for that. Not giving a fuck. Yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen. Oh. Well, I have to get the shirt that Brandon has. He says, I shaved my balls for this. And, <laughs> and if, you, if you haven't seen the league, it's great. It's like, it's my uh, I don't give a shit shirt. But I like that. It's hey, uh, yeah. So the review says mediocre at best. The show is pretty worthless from an educational standpoint. And the most recent episode platformed aggressive book burner and anti-vaxxer. Well done, guys. So too much emotion, honey. Yeah, we were like, oh, you and your listen. feelings. Ooh, you and your feelings. You should smoke feelings. about it. You should smoke about it. Oh, no. I agree. You, you, and you I have a, a question. I have a question for Brandon and Jesse. Uh, is there a sex tape out of, out of either one of y'all? Uh, okay. No. Uh, uh, before y'all answer that, let y'all, let me let y'all know that if y'all have never watched the episode of Motherhood Sex Marijuana, Miss Ruby Doll always, but I say always attempts to get in everybody's sexual business. I mean, I I, I ask questions about maybe, you know, if you had a husband, you got kids, obviously. That tells me you fucking, you enjoy fucking, obviously. But what I'm saying is that my girl will ask you details, so... You know, if, if, you well, know, she can say no, or I don't feel comfortable, that, and then the I'll back right off. No, that's no, the disclaimer. That's the disclaimer. <laughs> the only thing I used to joke around back in the day, so I'm former Navy and I served back in the 90s. And, and when anybody asks, like, how many kids you got? And I have five kids. Uh, and uh, they got, I got five that I know of. He doesn't that's have a lot of hobbies. <laughs> you know, I just joke around about it. And because, you know, there's probably some Thai kid or something like that with this nose somewhere else out there in Southeast Asia. I joke around about that, but no, I mean, I only had one woman that I, I thought, I, I, I swear I got her pregnant and we didn't talk. And then I saw her and she had this little kid who had dark hair and, and olive skin. I was like, fuck, she's better not come out. My wife, she said, the only thing I'm worried about with your past is that somebody's going to show up. Some kids and be like, I'm, I'm your son. I'd be like, fucking hey, cool. Come in and do you smoke? Because we should talk. We Basically, should definitely talk. Let's, talk. let's, let's have a let's roll a blunt. Talk. I like that ha perspective. Hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. But no, no sex tape. Uh, maybe back in the day had some pictures, but I don't know where those came from. But all I know is that woman, she's married, deeply Catholic. Ooh. And and the only reason why I found out is because in the <laughs> Navy, I saw I, she married a guy who was on my ship. And uh, I was like, cool, like, we'll, we'll be cool. And I, I reached out to him, like, we should be friends. And then I saw, I was like, man, who's that wife? Is that, oh, shit. Oh, wow. this is girl, man. I treated her like a plastic fuck doll. I mean, she was crazy. And uh, I mean, we did so many things over there that, man, right? I mean, I'm just like, I can't look at the guy. As soon as I saw it was his wife, I rescinded that. I'm like, I am not going to friend you on Facebook because you already know. Because here's the best part. I'll tell you this real funny story. I was in the Navy. I was with this girl. We broke up. She was fucking one of my best friends. And I was cool about it. I didn't really care. But I wanted him to feel bad. But anyways, we're in San Diego in training. And we're out this area. You, the only place you could smoke. And so we're out there smoking on the smoke deck. And uh, all my friends are over there. We're talking. And this girl comes over who was the roommate of this woman. I was some, some. And she came over. She goes, you know, I'm so glad that you don't live with us anymore. I said, why is that? She goes, because every night I have to hear, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, well, I don't hear it anymore. And everybody started laughing because that kid come up the stairs. And I ain't talked to his ass what he did to me. And I just pulled out a smoke out of my pack i said here you go bud and he goes oh we're cool now i'm like oh fuck that we're not we're far from cool i said but you need this his friends are clowning on him i'm like damn Whoa. dude but that woman like when i saw her husband i was like oh shit i wouldn't i wouldn't be friends with me either right i wouldn't be friends with me either that's like my wife don't want to be knowing about any of these women that was all crazy and all that I, that's cool that's cool because it's you don't need that competition in your head but that's about as racy as it gets for me brandon's got lots of sex tapes out there he's got uh skinny mormon boys three through 36 he's in all of them all oh volumes 
Oh my goodness. So, 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 are you, so you're the one with the Pornhub checks. Well, yeah. I, so, you know, they say like, about really skinny dudes, right? They're hung uh-huh. like a baby holding a, a, like a baby's arm holding an apple. That's how it is. <laughs> Get it. Get, get it to my leg. Are you guys serious about the porno thing? No. So no, I don't need that. Oh, Ruby, that's a joke. <laughs> I only look like a porn star director when my hair is long and I wear my big fuzzy jacket and my glasses, but I don't actually star in any of them. I mean, it, so. it would make sense. I'm going to get an orgasmo. Have you guys seen that movie? Oh, <laughs> that really funny. I love that part. You go, you know, I know unicorns are gay, but I think they're pretty fucking cool. Like you <laughs> always say those random things. I was laugh. Oh or or when God. they shoot the cop and the cop's got the guy who gets there and he uh, and then licks his fingers and slaps his ass. I was like, oh man, that was one of my favorite movies. It was oh so terrible, God. but so awesome at the same time. Oh, so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. The, the reason why I ask is because I stumbled across my parents' um, sex tape when I was young. And I mean, these people were just very like conservative. And so it's just like to see them in that light, it's just, it was a bit traumatizing for me. Did you watch the whole thing? That's my point. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Why was you watching though? Why were you watching? <laughs> because I was a nasty little curious girl. No, it's, it's like a car wreck. It's like a car. You can't touch. Once it starts, you're like, I couldn't look away for a few moments, and it was my sister and I. Shout out to my sister for discovering the sex tape with my parents. Oh my god, it was embarrassing. Now, now, Ruby, now, now, you know, you know, this, this is definitely not going to encourage your mama to watch our show. I'm just saying, your she mama you never to watch me. Definitely, she like. Did you upload it to OnlyFans? Bullshit! <laughs> you on that bullshit? If they were, if they were doing some good move, if it wasn't just a bunch of laying down and grunting, grunting and looking like my dad was going to pass out. <laughs> if he was really getting it, I don't know. I would do it, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, I had, I had friends. I remember, I mean, since we talking about this, I had this friend that I lived by and her parents were, they had no zero fucks were given and we were over there hanging out we had all these kids over there we're in high school and her dad did, he built homes and they go all right well we're gonna go upstairs and let you guys be at it and they were just oh man <laughs> oh my God. mad gorilla sex like stuffing her head in the side of the couch type sex right like, <laughs> right and it was rocking you could hear it just like against the floor and oh, all, all my friend says with a straight face to just blow it off. She goes, my parents like moving furniture around a lot. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, girl. Good no. for her. Yeah, girl, no. Normal yeah. life. That, that like... excuse is not going to fly. But okay, nice <laughs> try, though. Good and we just try. all laugh. But we are just like, yeah. Oh, and then, you know, that's that, the only thing. What's going to happen from there? Little boys are going to start getting their pee-pee hard, right? And they're going to be like, oh. Yeah, maybe this will happen. And the girl's like, nah, it ain't happening. Nope. <laughs> nope. Because you don't know how to use that thing anyways. Okay. So don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh man. my goodness. Oh, man, yes. But just l- let's give you a chance to, you know, tell everybody your information. So, you know what I mean? Because we'll definitely include it in, in, um, in the description. And, of course, like like I said before, um, a, a season four is dropping on YouTube on September 18th, we we drop new episodes every week. After that, your episode will be dropping in one of those weeks. Of course, we'll send you the link as soon as it, it drops. But of course, but this is a time where you can, you know, tell everybody how to find you social media wise, um, web wise, you know, however people need to find you. Yeah, um, you can find us at cannabisschool.us. Or go to Apple, Spotify, just type in cannabis. It's the first one up at the top. Um, yeah. Or on Instagram or Cannabis School Podcast as well. 
That's- and you can get Brandon's sex tape on OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. And uh, I mean, the that's only so Mormon bad. boy. I mean, because, uh, you know, because that is like the, the new wave. If it's not on OnlyFans, it's on Pornhub. And, you know, if it, the checks uh, apparently well, you are rolling over cross there. Platform. I don't know. That's how I ain't you got monetize. time to be over there. I ain't got time. Forty thousand dollars if you're doing it right on Pornhub. So if yeah. y'all see me on there, mind your business, okay? All I had to do I'm was show my bottle. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> that's it. That's all you yeah. got to do. No, Shoot, I, I, you know what? I would do some OnlyFans for some money. I'll suck some dick for some OnlyFans. Okay, see, <laughs> you have to do that. <laughs> Just lift up your leg. <laughs> Pregnant sex. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, market. I'm gonna market pregnant sex. Bring oh, that back. No, bring it's there. Back. Oh it's there. I will. I will oh tell you God. this. I'll that leave you with this laugh. Reminds me of one of the bloggers I watched. He he made like a he, like he made a video at the end of all his videos. He made this one video where he was like, wait. He was like, what? You ain't gotta co- you ain't gotta clock my pussy miles. Uh uh-uh. uh uh uh. This ain't your lane, Earl. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh-uh. uh, and I was like, "Yes, stop. Let's stop clocking each other, pussy mouths. Let's stop doing it." <laughs> <laughs> and on that motherfucking note, we go ahead and hear motherhood sex marijuana in the motherfucking building. Hey. Thank you guys for being on the show. We so. But I think Jesse too. had a joke for us. I oh think no, no, was- you're good. No, no, we're good. All right, we, we're at that time, and and you guys need to smoke a little bit more. Brandon definitely needs to smoke more. And it's definitely getting late in this hood, so yes. Thank you, cannabis for being on the show. We appreciate you big time. Thank you guys, guys, motherfucking bill. Love you guys, man. Love you. Uh Love you guys. That's great.